All right, I couldn't leave well enough alone. I wanted to see if I could do better. Even though it did pass what I would call acceptable deep vacuum test for performing, if you wanted to try to perform a vacuum decay test with a refrigerant manifold gauge sets, which they are not meant to pull a deep and hold a deep vacuum, especially with rubber hoses. So here we're going through the process of changing the valve. Say you had a leaky valve or you know it's old, you've done three, four, five hundred uh, recharges, recoveries, checking out, and you used your valves and you started getting leaking valves because the O-rings started to get a little nick on them, a little wearing out. So I took three of them out to show you and I'm gonna take one out on camera uh, to show you the whole process, but here they are taken down and as you can see I removed the o-rings out of the out of these and You could see the grooves where the o-rings sit and you could see the little Slot to fit this part right there. So if you look at that it fits right Inside there and it grabs right on there like that and that's how those hold together these little uh, clip rings here hold on the valves. And if you come over here when I turn the valve around, you see right there, you see that little clip? That's the rounded end of the clip. So you can't take these off until you take that clip out. And I couldn't find my pick tool, so I'm using something else. And can I do this on camera one-handed? Didn't think of that. Yeah. Let's, um... Let's put a knife through my hand on camera. Okay, hold on. I forgot I, forgot I had this tripod thing here. And let's get that. And get that down. Nice and shaky. Best cinematography of all the YouTubers. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. There's no editing. This all goes one take. Any of you guys who've watched me before know how I do it. I don't clean things up. I don't edit things. And if I leave a mistake, I leave it in there. And um, there we go. You see how that goes? That clip just came out. Make sure you can see it. Okay. Make sure it's focused right there. And so the clip came out. There's the clip. Comes off. Uh, 9 sixteenths or, or 14 millimeter made in Germany 14 millimeter break it loose and then it'll pull out of there because the o-rings are holding down inside the cylinder and you can see let's see if I can make it focus on my hand instead Can you see how it comes apart? Slips right in there. Okay. So then I take a toothpick and I worked the O-rings. It's gonna take me, I gotta do a lot of fumbling to get this off of here in front of camera and trying to look through the lens so you could get it. But basically you get the gif of it. Put a little lubricant on there. I have a lot of lubricant from my dielectric grease spark plug glue grease same thing it's silicone not silicone the hard silicone it's a silicone grease and so slipping one of these off with gloves and there we go so we got our o-ring off so in reverse order Let's take one of the ones I already have all the way off. See, there's no need for you to see me do all O-rings and everything. I get a little bit of silicone grease. That's way more than enough that's needed. And uh, Put it down in the groove. Now I have it in the groove. Pick up an O-ring. Boom, got an O-ring. Slip it on top. Use your fingers, get it with your little bit of a fingernail that's left over, and I have to put it down. 
I can't do it up in camera and see so I'm just grabbing it I'm pushing it down and I'm just rolling it around boom I just got one on then same thing pick up an o-ring put it on there and you'll slide one o-ring right on top of the other and it'll go into the second groove Boom, there, it's on two. So then I'll grab, put these together, got that in there, slip it down in one of your grooves, in your, in your piston bore, wiggle it, got it in there, and screw it down. You might have to back out the cylinder, you might have to hold the nut part while you rotate the cylinder back. So you see how I'm unscrewing? I'm unscrewing the threads coming up so it'll back out from being down in the bore because I wanna tighten it. Because as you tighten it, as you tighten up that gap right there, it pushes the whole assembly down. And if this is already screwed all the way down, you'll bottom it out. And when you try to tighten it up, you might strip out your threads or bust something. So back out the piston all the way back and then put down your threaded body down. As you can see, the gap disappear there. There we go. We're just touching. Now that won't leak. It's not how tight. It's the O-rings. The O-rings on the cylinder touching the outside of the cylinder and the O-rings in the groove. It's what's doing sealing. This being tight is not doing any sealing. So you do not have to over tighten this. This is only brass. You only want it to hold. You don't have to go uh, King Kong on it there. So just a light tightness because it's brass and it doesn't seal by how tight it is. I'm just giving it a ever. If you guys are used to aluminum and brass, you should know not to tighten. I'm just giving a look at if you could see this movement. See that? It just barely moved. It was already all the way down. That's all I did. Do not over tighten. Because it does not seal by how tight it is. And then you go in reverse order. We got a black cap. It's one of the center ones. You could see the little flat spot inside there. You see inside? So you line up your flat spot to on here. It drops down. Grab one of your pins. Find a little gap. Yeah, there it goes. See that little opening right there? That's where you'll go in at. Go like this. Put it in there. That's it. It's now on. And now you have an operating cylinder that has been lubricated with silicone grease. I will retest this if you've seen my last videos before. Uh, you see, I was able to go all the way down to 10 microns, 8 mic 10 microns on uh, the 552i Testo. This went down to 10 microns, and the blue vac went all the way down to 8 microns. While I had it hooked up on both of the cylinders right here, like this, I was drawing the vacuum through here, and I put it on the blue vac software, uh, and I time graphed it overnight. And I showed you from when I started the vacuum pump at night to the morning how far the vacuum fell. And then the next day I turned it off and I grafted it all day long. And you got to see the vacuum decay coming up. So we're going to see if there's an improvement over yesterday when I performed the vacuum decay to today. So now I'm treating it and I'm putting silicone grease, which always took care of all the field piece problems with leaks and uh, my old Testo 470, and any of my previous Testos I had, what was it, um, before the 470, was it a 323, or it was really early, the really, really early first digital uh, set of gauges I bought from Testo, I don't know if it was like 15 years ago or so, uh, before the 470 ever came out. And uh, yeah, any leaks were always cured 
with this when it came to uh, vacuum leaks. So that's it. Not much to show. It's not rocket science. Don't be afraid of it. Uh, if you start noticing any refrigerant gas bypassing, or if you're trying to do your nitrogen pressure decay test, and you're noticing you're losing leaking, even though if you plug off the ends of your hoses, like you wrap your put your hoses into the ends, and you're still lo uh, losing, then take your hoses off, whether it's vacuum or whether it's nitrogen pressure decay test, and only test your gauges only with no hoses on them. Put a little silicone grease or nylog right at the end here and cap all your fitting ends, draw vacuum or do pressure and see if just your gauge all by itself can hold a vacuum or can hold uh, say high ni uh, nitrogen pressure decay test, say 400 PSI or so. Um, test your gauge without hoses on it. C cramp them off, close all the valves and then let it set for a vacuum decay test and the nitrogen decay test. If it passes, that's good. If it doesn't, it's either leaking by the O-rings and it's coming up the shaft or where are we at? You see that little white pad there at the bottom? That's a nylon pad. Uh, many years ago they used to use Teflon. Teflon was very good, but Teflon got damaged very easily. And uh, Teflon also embedded. I don't know if you could see it in here. And let me try to get the right angle. Let's see if I can focus it. I'm trying to find if you can see the little indent in here. So you can see where it hits. Okay, maybe taking that shadow off. So what I'm trying to show you is a close-up. There it goes, right there. You see that ring? That is the only sealing surface. That is where it actually seals. Come on, focus. And I had it focus, now it's, it's going white on me. There, there it goes. It's, it's the auto exposure that's killing me. This is only an iPhone 6S Plus. It's uh, nothing fancy. But you can see that little ring on there. That is the ceiling surface. And what would happen is small metal particles, debris from burnt out compressors, would get embedded right across that surface right there. And when you would shut down your valve and go to seal, it would embed inside the soft material. And it would cause a bypassing leak between one side and the other side. One side's refrigerant, and then you have the other side going out to your hoses. And so you would get something embedded in here or damage the Teflon. Well, they made a sturdier material that's a nylon-based or a nylon mix composite. Can't remember which one this is. And this is much more durable but you do have to tighten it a little bit more compared to the old Teflon ones. So those fit down into, if you can see, there you go. You get to see the cylinder and the O-rings slide up and down on this surface right here. That long, big surface, that's the surface the O-rings go up and down. That is your only sealing surface between the refrigerant passage down in here and then coming outside, out through your valve stem. Then your other sealing surface is this little ridge. The little ridge right there where the tip of my thing's hitting right there. That little ridge, that round ridge is the only thing that seals on that little ring right there. And that's it, that tiny little thin little narrow band is what's doing all your, if you're doing a 600 PSI nitrogen pressure decay test, this is the only thing stopping it from leaking. If you're doing a 10 micron uh, vacuum decay test and you pull down to her and you close it off, this is the only thing sealing you. So it's very important to keep debris out of there. And if you notice any problems, it's very easy to take these apart and uh, put them back together. So 
now it's not a mystery. You don't have to worry about anything. Call up uh, Testo, order the little kit. Like you've seen my uh, kit for, uh, here's the field piece kits. And as you can see, the size difference. <laughs> there's quite a quite a size difference. So there's one for the field piece. And as you can see, the size difference right there. That's the size difference between the field piece and the, or the old 470 too. The 470 was, uh, I think it was the 470 a little bit, or 470 was also kind of small. I like dealing with the big ones. It's easier on the fingers to work with, but that's it. I don't think I have to show you no more. It's not rocket science. I showed you taking one off. I showed you putting the O-rings on. And I showed you reinserting, I showed you putting the clip back on, did it one time, and you can do the other four. So now you don't have to be afraid of it. If you notice any leaks, call them up, order a new set, and put it together yourself. That's it guys, see you on the next one.